from the News Channel 5 Network. This is Sportsline. Good evening, Nashville. Welcome to Sportsline right here on News Channel 5 Plus. Glad you are with us. John Burton with you. Always happy to be on the airwaves here on News Channel 5 Plus as we uh, talk sports for an hour. It should be an interesting show. Coming up in our next segment, we're going to talk with Chris Muller. He's from 93.7 The Fan in Pittsburgh, and he also writes for Yard Barker. And he recently did an article where he ranked the 32 NFL fan bases. Uh, from 32 all the way to 1. And he ranked the Tennessee Titans fan base 21st. 21st. How does that make you feel, Titans fans? You're, you're, you're 21st in the list of uh, NFL fan bases? He explains why. I'll have him explain why, but uh, he's got some explaining to do um, when he comes on at, uh, uh, after our first break. So Chris Muller will join us here on Sportsline. I got a lot I need to get off my chest with him. So that should be an interesting conversation. You'll definitely want to stick around for that. Uh, as far as uh, news and notes, not a whole lot going on today. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies signed their number two overall draft pick, Ja Morant, out of Murray State. So he is signed, sealed, and delivered, and ready to participate in the NBA Summer League. How about the Philadelphia 76ers offering Ben Simmons a five-year, $170 million uh, contract, max uh, contract uh, to stay in Philadelphia. Ben Simmons, of course, the former LSU star uh, who still has trouble hitting a jump shot. Kind of need to do that in the NBA, but apparently his play is good enough to be offered $170 million over the next five years. Um, we will see if he uh, takes that offer. I would imagine he would. He's likely to do so. Women's World Cup semifinals. The U.S beats England 2-1 over in France. What a game uh, this was. Alex Morgan on her 30th birthday getting what proved to be the game-winning goal, but uh, the Brits, well, there was a bit of controversy in this game. They had a tying goal uh, disallowed after review uh, because uh, the player was off sides. And then later on, uh, they were awarded a penalty in controversial fashion. Uh, late in the game, they, they got a penalty kick, but the U.S. goaltender uh, able to make the stop. So the U.S. holds on to win 2-1. They will play the winner of uh, tomorrow's semifinal between the Netherlands and Sweden, and uh, those two winners will square off this weekend. So uh, Team USA still in the hunt for a second straight World Cup, but, man, they had to struggle to do it, but they certainly uh, get it done in the semifinal. And they played that game without one of their Probably the star of the U.S. women's team in this World Cup, Megan Rapino, uh, who had uh, five goals coming into this uh, game, but uh, she did not warm up before the game and did not play, was replaced in the starting lineup after an apparent hamstring injury. So we will have to see if she will be available uh, for the U.S. when they play the final this weekend, again, against either the Netherlands or Sweden. So that pretty much catches you up there. Here in Nashville, there's a huge soccer game tomorrow night at Nissan Stadium. It's the United States taking on Jamaica, the men's team, I should say, the U.S. men's team taking on Jamaica uh, in the semifinals of the Gold Cup tournament that will be played here tomorrow night uh, over at Nissan Stadium. A huge game for the American soccer team. Uh, earlier today, the U.S. men's team met the media. Our cameras were there. Greg, I guess with everything here in the city of Nashville, I'm sure you've seen the types of things they've brought here in terms of sports. The NFL draft was just here and the type of, I guess, crowds they brought. How excited are you to bring this U.S. men's national team here and, and play in, in front of what should be a pretty good crowd? We're really excited. Um, you know, this is my first time in Nashville and, and seeing the city. It's a beautiful city. I know how passionate the, the people here are about music and sports, and we think it's a fantastic environment to play in, and we're really looking forward to the game tomorrow. Go ahead. Uh, Greg, compared to the game a month ago when you played the Men's Sun League, I mean, obviously there'll be so much you can take away from that, but are you expecting kind of the same style, or are you, do you anticipate that Jamaica's going to put you guys in the world? Um, you know, we've been watching them, and it's a good team. They got some good quality, good attacking quality, um, good counterattacking quality, good speed up front, robust um, back line. 
And, you know, we see, um, you know, similarities to the way they played in Washington to what they've been doing in the tournament. Um, we know they like to, to win the ball and they like to attack. Um, you know, they're not afraid to play for, for second balls. They have a big, good physicality up top. Um, they have wingers coming inside to win second balls, uh, midfielders pushing through, attacking midfielders, supporting the, the, the play. So they have, you know, they have some threats. Um, we've also been looking at how we can break them down um, efficiently and, and do a good job of that. Yes. There's some issues with the functionality of your press and also the spacing of, of the midfield as far as where Weston and Michael were set up. How much of that, those issues are, are just kind of the team still learning the style or how much and how much of it was Curacao kind of causing issues for you guys? Well, I think, you know, first of all, Curacao is a good team in build up from goalkeeper, right? So, you know, that's, um, that's a strength of theirs. Um, having said that, I think, you know, we could have dropped our line a little bit and taken the goalkeeper out of play and not, not giving them an extra man. Um, they had a hard time creating goal scoring opportunities. You know, I think they had one shot inside the 18 on the header on the corner kick. They had a couple shots around the 18, maybe on the border of the 18. Everything else was from 25 and further. And, um, you know, they weren't troubling us that much in, in that low block defense. Having said that, I think we could have been more efficient with our midfield line moving closer to our forwards to, to press more. I think we could have been tighter with our back line pushing up more. We allowed too much space. We allowed them to play balls into the striker um, too easily. And, and that would have made things easier for us in the game. In terms of the offensive spacing, um, you know, it's true what you said. We, we became disconnected. And a lot of times in buildup, you saw either a four... 1-5, right, or 3-1-5, something like that, where Michael would either drop on the other side of the attacking line um, and have only Weston central, or Michael would be um, central and we'd have five guys high. And that's just not proper spacing. It becomes very difficult to, you know, to get any type of, um, you know, offensive flow when, when that's what your shape looks like. When we analyze it, what we're seeing from Coruscant is they're very man-orientated. And we, we have to be able to break a man-orientated defense. And sometimes it doesn't look normal when it's, when it's man-orientated. They would follow guys all over the place. And what we're saying to our wingers, what we're saying to our midfielders is we need to keep moving. We need to move into spaces that they're not comfortable going in. It was very similar to the Trinidad game, except they're, even, they're better at doing it. And they're more disciplined doing it. So it gave us some problems. Yes. Go ahead. Just in general, how do you feel about the way uh, Christian and Weston have complimented each other over the course of the tournament? Just what's caught your attention about each of them so far? So, the yeah, so they're two completely different players but both very good and, and have very good skill sets. When you look at Christian, he's a guy that um, can change a game with his skill, with his ability to find players, with his ability to take players on and beat them 1v1 and deliver a final pass. Um, when you look at Weston, very physically dynamic player. You know, there were runs, you know, when you talk about being able to break a man-oriented defense, he can do it single-handedly. When he gets the ball and starts running, players just can't catch him. And it's, it's really nice to see. He, did, he had a good scene in the first half where, you know, he dribbles by a bunch of guys and passes to Tyler Boyd. Um, and we're able to, you know, we should be able to go to the other side of the field. So, you know, two exciting players. And I, I think as, you know, we work with them more and as they get um, more comfortable, they're going to be, um, they're really going to shine. Go ahead. Greg, uh, as you get to the business end of this tournament, in, in your first com competition in charge, what do you think you'll really evaluate in terms of whether this month plus was a success? Is it a matter of getting to the final? Is it a matter of winning? Or is it more a matter of grading performances on the field kind of independent of that? I, I think that, you know, evaluating performances happens every single day. You know, we're, every game we're breaking down and we're evaluating the individual performance of the players and we're seeing, you know, what concepts they're understanding, what concepts need reinforcement. Um, you know, but we've said all along, th this team, I think, will be measured, the success of this team will be measured by if we're going to win this tournament or not. You know, we, we want to get to the final. We want to win the final. And we know, you know, if you asked me um, a month ago, 
you know, the answer would still be the same. We think Mexico is the, the favorite for this tournament. We think it's a very strong team. You know, we have a lot of respect for Jamaica. That's something we highlighted before this tournament as well. And, you know, now we're in the finals with, um, with or the semifinals with four good teams. You know, I think Jamaica has been strong. Mexico is outstanding. And Haiti has been, uh, you know, another, I think, wonderful surprise of this tournament. Jack. Greg, in the past, you said that Benfit and LB, you think Josie is the best striker in America. Um, if throughout this tournament, you prefer Josie, and I know that Josie came in with a little bit of a hamstring movement, but where, where do you think? Well, I, th I think that's relevant, first of all. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, but where's, you know, Josie went 83 minutes against the panelists. So, you know, where, where do you think he's, is he not fit? Is he not, you know, just unhealthy? Josie is exactly where we need him to be. Ready to play yeah, he's been ready to play. Yep. Go ahead. Another crowd question from, from the outside looking in. How, how well do you think Nashville has accepted soccer? And I mean, 40,000 fans here last year is a reason to expect even more tomorrow night. I, I hope so. You know, I can't wait till MLS comes here. Um, you know, everything you hear about the city, it's going to be an amazing um, MLS city. Um, you know, when I look at the growth of Major League Soccer, a lot of it has to do with, um, you know, the expansion cities and how well they've taken off and how well they've spread the game. So, you know, really looking forward to how Nashville embraces MLS and, um, you know, hoping for a great crowd tomorrow night and, um, you know, really give them a taste of international soccer. Obviously, you scheduled Jamaica as a friendly for a, re for a reason uh, back in early June. Uh, I know you haven't been in this position for a long time, but obviously you, you're familiar with a lot of Jamaican players from your time in the MLS and, and know that there's also plenty in college soccer and USL. How would you describe the feelings of, of US soccer toward Jamaican soccer and, and vice versa? What does this fixture kind of mean? What does this matchup kind of mean? Um. You know, I, again, I think, you know, Major League Soccer has, has helped Jamaica um, tremendously developing some of their younger talent. Um, you know, they've also have had a uh, you know, number of high-profile players playing overseas. Um, you know, when you look at Bailey doing a great job in, um, in Germany, they have a lot of players playing in the English leagues. And, um, you know, I, I think it's, you know, it, it's, it's always a good opponent. It's always a difficult opponent. Um, you know, when you talk about typical Gold Cup matchups, right, you have U.S.-Panama, right, we always seem to play Panama in the Gold Cup. It always seems to be a one-goal game somehow. And Jamaica's another tough team. Um, you know, we've played in the last two tournaments. This will be the third one in a row. And, um, you know, we know it's a good team. Uh, Greg, uh, what, what challenges will Jamaica present that you maybe haven't seen, your group hasn't seen yet in this tournament? And a little follow-up on Leon Bailey. What have you thought of how he's kind of integrated because he's kind of new to that group? How, how have you seen him kind of settle into that group? Um, what challenges? You know, I think uh, you know, it, there, it's a very similar opponent to what we've been seeing in terms of um, you know, some strength, some speed. Um, you know, I think their wingers are, are, are high quality players. I think they have, a, um, you know, maybe a different gear of speed than we've seen in this tournament in particular. Um, that's why it was good to play them in the, um, in the beginning of June to, to see what that looks like. Um, you know, again, and I think, it's a, I think it's a season team. You know, maybe with, with Bailey coming in, you know, he's one of the newer members. A lot of those guys have been playing together for a while. What I'd say about him is, you know, I don't think we've seen his best yet. I think he's got another gear. Uh, I've seen another gear in Germany. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just him getting integrated into the team, him feeling comfortable, him being used in the right way. But, you know, I, I, I really like watching him play. I really like watching Leverkusen play last year under Peter Bosch. I think they had a, a good, good um, model of play and was an attractive team to watch. That is Greg Berhalter. Uh, the head coach of the U.S. men's soccer team. Again, they're in action tomorrow night against Jamaica in the semifinals of the Gold Cup tournament. It'll be at Nissan Stadium. Uh, a big game for the Americans. If they can win that game, they'll move on to the finals and face the winner of the other semifinal between Mexico and Haiti. The U.S. coming off a big 1-0 win over Curacao Sunday night in Philadelphia. So uh, big time international soccer coming to Music City tomorrow night. All right, time for our first break. When we come back, 
We're going to talk to Chris Muller from 93.7 The Fan in Pittsburgh and Yard Barker. He says you Titans fans are the 21st ranked fan base in the NFL out of 32. I'm going to get his thoughts on that. We'll see what he has to say. Stay with us.